This is the new Sony 16 to 35 millimeter full frame f4G power zoom lens. And in this video, I'll share why this tiny zoom is a sleeper lens and why it has been a game changer for my video workflow. But first, a disclaimer, Sony lent me this pre-production lens for this review, but they are not sponsoring this video. That said, this video is supported by those of you who have purchased my camera guides and LUTs. To learn more, check the links in the description and thank you guys so much for the support. I won't lie to you guys when when I first heard about the specs of this lens, I wasn't terribly excited. It only had a maximum aperture of f4 and the price tag of 1200 seemed like a lot and the new linear motor power zoom feature, while interesting, didn't really sell me on paper. But all of that changed when I actually started using the lens. The first thing I noticed was the size. This thing is shockingly small. It isn't much larger than Sony's 10 to 18 crop sensor lens and weighs almost nothing at 350 grams. It has a 72 millimeter filter thread and all zooming is done internally. So the front of the lens does not extend in and out, which is great to see. Minimum focus distance is decent at around 10 inches, allowing you to get pretty close to your subject. And Sony has packed a ton onto the surface of this small lens. We of course have the focus and zoom rings, followed by a physical aperture ring on the back, which can be toggled between clickless and clicked via a switch on the right hand side of the lens. Right next to that, there is an iris lock switch and you can set the ring to automatic, allowing the camera to control aperture. On the left side of the lens, we have a rocker switch for controlling the power zoom, which we'll talk about in a moment, a function button that can be programmed to just about anything in the menus, and an auto manual focus toggle switch. Now let's get to the headline feature of this lens, the PZ or power zoom functionality. The zoom on this lens is controlled with a linear motor, not not a ring and a bunch of mechanical gears like you see on this Tamron lens. And this gives you several advantages over a traditional zoom lens. The first is how smoothly this lens can be zoomed. Outside of expensive cinema lenses, most photo lenses have very poor zoom mechanics and they get the job done for changing focal lengths. But if you need to capture a zoom, they're pretty bad and very jerky and stuttery. Another massive advantage is how many ways you can control zoom. You can use the zoom ring or the zoom rocker switch on the actual lens itself. Itself, you can program a button to enter a zoom mode or program one button to zoom out and another to zoom in on your camera. And finally, if you're using a Sony cinema camera with a rocker switch on the body or handle, you can use that to zoom as well. And in my opinion, the biggest advantage to this motorized zoom is that you can use it remotely. Since zooming is done electronically on the lens, you can use something like the Sony Remote Commander to control zoom. Simply pair it over Bluetooth for hands-free zooming. I've been using this setup for my B-roll recently as I can automate super smooth zooms without touching the camera. As if all of that wasn't cool enough, you can customize the speed of your zooms when in standby or record mode independently. I've set my standby speed to fast so I can quickly frame up shots and record speed to slow for those silky smooth zooms. To see what this looks like, check out my Red Scarlet X review where I've used this method quite a bit. All of these zoom controls also work with Sony's clear image zoom, which is just nuts. For those who don't know, clear image zoom is Sony's method of digitally zooming without losing much, if any, image quality depending on your camera and settings. You can turn it on in the menu of Sony cameras, and once on, it'll usually add a range of 1.5 times to your zoom lens. If you turn this on, the 16 to 35 can effectively be used as a 16 to 52 millimeter lens. And this can also be controlled any of the ways we've talked about, so a remote, the actual zoom ring on the lens, as well as the rocker or any buttons you program on your camera. I love this option and I also love how the camera will automatically finish getting to that 35 millimeter range and then just keep going if you want it to do so. On top of all of that, this 16 to 35 millimeter lens also just looks really good. As you'd expect, F4 looks very sharp and there isn't too much chromatic aberration or vignetting. The lens only improves as you stop down, distortion is very controlled even at 16 millimeters, and flaring on this lens is pleasing and well controlled. And autofocus is super snappy as you'd expect from a modern Sony lens. All right, for all you vloggers out there, this is what things look like at 16 millimeters with uh, stabilization turned on, and there you have it.
stabilization is actually working out great. There are a ton of mosquitoes by this random abandoned building. So we're actually gonna head out, but that gives you an idea of what things look like. Pretty straightforward stuff. And I think this is gonna be actually be a pretty great lens for anyone looking to do any kind of vlogging. <sighs> I think F4 is going to be just fine for most people. And the size and lightweightness of this lens is great. And autofocus, you're just not gonna have to worry about it on this lens, which is always a good thing when you're just vlogging away and don't wanna worry about it. Like all good things in life, there are, however, some downsides or trade-offs if you're going to be using this particular lens. First, we have the maximum aperture of f4. 2.8 would have been nice, but I imagine the size, weight, and cost would have increased, not to mention potentially losing the power zoom feature, as the optical groups would have to be much heavier and larger. Another thing missing on this lens is OSS, or stabilization. Now, this is less of an issue on wider lenses, or if you're using a camera with built-in stabilization when it comes to the sensor, but still something to keep in mind. The older Sony Zeiss F4 lens has OSS, whereas this newer one doesn't. And finally, we have the cost of this lens. There are a lot of other lenses sitting in this price range, so definitely something to consider. There might be some opportunity cost by going with this lens. However, with all of that said, if you are a documentary filmmaker or a studio shooter who wants control wirelessly over those incredible smooth zooms that are only possible with this power zoom linear motor, I think going forward, this is really going to be a sleeper for Sony full frame cameras. Most people will be turned off by the price and the maximum aperture of F4, but you just cannot beat the amount of zoom control you have with this thing, especially if you're considering using a remote. Personally, I'm pre-ordering one of these things today and we'll be using the snot out of it here on the channel going forward. So that's gonna wrap up this review. If you wanna learn more about the lens and my camera guides or LUTs, check out the information in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video.